anything goes and design for every taste were the watchwords of furniture design in the 1980s. The decade was kicked off by the Milan-based design collective Memphis, founded in 1981 by the Italian architect and designer Ettore Sozzas. His postmodern design language influenced, among others, the French designer Philip Stark here on the left and the Italian entrepreneur Alberto Alessi, head of the company that bears his name. In the 1980s, the German design theoretician Volker Albus was still involved in the practical side as an interior and furniture designer. Everywhere, young people came along and felt encouraged to go into design. There was a survey that showed design was the favorite discipline, even more popular than being a musician. The first pop star of the design scene was Philip Stark. In 1982, he designed the private rooms of France's then-president François Mitterrand, which made him famous overnight. Philip Stark is considered quite the universal genius. He designs everything from interiors to all kinds of products. His mission is to design for rich and poor. If you consider the long list of designers, certainly there are better designers than me. But I'm the only one crazy enough to have spent 30 years of his life killing design. At least I killed the elitism of design. His first successful furniture design was the Coste chair, which he made in 1985 for the famous Coste Café in Paris. It has become a classic. It's made of mahogany and leather and costs more than 600 euros. He understood perfectly how to make things within certain price ranges. And that was very important for popularizing himself. It was about not only thinking experimentally, but also making something that sells. <coughs> and this product still sells well today, the 1991 kettle from the Italian design company Alessi. The special feature, a brass head with a two-tone whistle. The kettle was designed in 1982 by the German industrial designer Richard Zappa. This kettle is a good symbol for this idea from Alessi that the area where you eat and live, where you offer fruit and so forth, ought to be defined not just functionally, but also as a living area to be experienced sensually. The Italian brand makes utensils that regularly turn into cult objects. The secret of its success? High-value cookware at a reasonable price and with a dash of humor. Alberto Alessi, who took the reins of the family business in 1970, hired renowned designers in the 1980s and made the name world famous. Look, you don't buy an espresso machine just because you want to make coffee or a kettle just to boil water. Those are the basic functions you can expect from every espresso machine or kettle in the world. What our customers are really seeking is a bit of poetry, some craftsmanship, even if these are industrially manufactured products. A brand and many different styles, a principle that still works today. Around 200 illustrious designers and architects currently work for the Alessi company. Among them, Philip Stark, the star designer dreamed up what must be the world's best-known citrus press. The 1980s, creative companies and designers cultivating good taste.